mine was quick. I mean, because I had a professor, right, that really wanted me and, you know, my transcript was good. So, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be a professor or a lecturer back home. I wrote two page SOP <laughs> explaining why I'm going to Canada. I was open to coming back. You have to be your biggest fan. <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Nikki, aka Ada Canada. If this is the first time that you're coming across us, <laughs> I hope that you don't make it your last. Stick around to the end, like this video, watch this video, and check out my other videos. Subscribe. And if you're a returning subscriber, hi, or welcome back to my channel. Hi. For today's video, I have a special guest on my channel i know you guys are tired of seeing my face so that's why i brought fresh face for you guys <laughs> introduce yourself hi everyone um my name is Eziolo. i'm nikki's friend at the canada and i'm happy to be here today so <laughs> <laughs> thank you Eziolu, for coming on my channel i brought Eziolu with me on set we've been planning this video for the longest possible time ever but it's True. just there's just never enough time because we don't live in the same place we're doing this today finally i'm gonna be asking izzy a few questions because she's an immigrant like myself she's from nigeria just like i'm from nigeria we went to the same school back home just to give you guys some context some perspective on how she she moved to Canada, what she did, how she got a study visa, came to Canada, immigrated, did all of those things. We're in different professions and so that really helps if you're in the same profession as she is. Just talk about how you basically moved to Canada in general. Yeah. Right? So, yes. <laughs> are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, so I do have, just in case you see that I'm not looking at the screen, I have like my pointers, questions to just help me here. And so starting off, what do you do currently? Okay, is that your question? Yes, now. <laughs> you too, currently. <laughs> yes, now. Oh. Currently, I work as a structural engineer hey. in Canada. See, all these so. people, all these people that used to deal with roads and bridges. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I design buildings and I do consultation as well. Okay, that's good. Are you based here in Alberta? No, I used to be, she used to be my roommate. So I got a job and I left to Regina, Saskatchewan. And so I, I came to visit her. So that's basically why I'm here. How long have you been here in Canada? Um, basically this year is going to be my fourth year since I came. So that's in... 2018. 2018 yes okay, i arrived in 2018. okay what made you choose canada above other countries because like there's a whole influx of people into different countries either uk or us or canada what, what made you just decide on canada and not us or um, any other place actually that's a good question i chose canada because i i feel like one can easily you know settle here after studies so i wanted a place that um i don't know the immigration system or policy is kind of more friendly than the rest of the countries out there. So that was why I chose Canada. Is that you'll be able to stay back yeah. you know, compared to places like UK. UK is very easy, but yeah. you know, like how long do you have to stay before you'll be able to get yeah. your residency? That sort of thing. Tell us about your journey, you know, from when did you start applying? When did you figure out that, okay, this is Canada, you wanted to go to the full story, the whole immigration story? Was it, you signed in 2017? Because for you to have come yes. in 2018, that means you must have signed in 2017. Exactly. So, okay. um, so basically, the my journey was tough and there's a lot of work. First of all, I knew what I wanted to do. So, I knew I wanted to do masters, a research-based masters, and I wanted to have a scholarship or research grant or something. So the funding, yeah, like a funding. So mm -hmm. first, I said my journey. Like basically, if you want to come for studies and you want to do it by yourself, you need to give yourself like at least a year to process the whole thing. Like it's basically it's not it's not a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm gonna say. So. I started my journey in 2017. I knew what I wanted, so I started looking out for schools. I browsed for top schools in Canada because I didn't want anything less. <laughs> I wanted the best. So I browsed for the top schools in Canada. 
I checked out the program. Sorry, what, what were you going for? Like, what, what masters were you going for? Research based masters. No, like, structural. In, in what field? Masters in structural yeah. engineering. Stru but, like, your background is. I, civil engineering. So, bachelor's in civil engineering? Yes. Okay. So, I wanted to major in structural engineering. I checked out for schools. I saw University of Alberta and I reached out to, I mean, I reached out to a lot of professors, right? You have to send, send an email to them, a series of email introducing myself. I attached my resume and my transcript to the email asking the professor like hey i love what you're doing i would like to work with you do you mind us discussing my qualifications and my long-term goals something like that i reached out to like over 100 professors i'm not even going to lie in, in the faculty of engineering yes. no not u of a only okay so series like of from schools. other schools yes okay I reached out, I think I reached out to U of T, University of Toronto, BC, UBC, U of A, like series of professors. The thing is, you just need only one year. When you were sending out those emails asking for research supervision for your master's, yeah. did they respond to you? Some did. Okay. Some didn't. Some will tell you, oh, I don't have funding good luck and keep searching. Some um, <laughs> didn't even reach out at all. Which is understandable, like, mm -hmm. they are busy. They don't have your time like a lot of people are reaching out to them so all you need is just one yes i just got one yes and had my first interview with him you know he asked me questions about my undergrad like what i did all the courses i took in my undergrad and why do i want to work with him and okay. you know i get my reasons because what he works on his research group is something i really wanted to do he majored in steel designs steel research or something so I explained myself and uh, he told me he was going to get back to me. <laughs> so he didn't say yes immediately. He reached out, said he wants to have another interview. He has a topic he wants to work on. I wanted to see if that's my interest. Like if I wanted to work on pipeline, because you know I did something on pipeline, right? Mm -hmm. So he told me that he wanted to work on pipeline. He's looking for a student that will come and work on pipeline with him. And which has to do with using my structural experience or knowledge to analyze pipeline. So I said, Good. Like I'm okay with that. After the second interview, he then told me I can go ahead and apply to the school that he's going to, you know, talk to whoever that is doing the admission process. That I'm a student and he can he wants me to work with him. Because one thing about my school is that, especially if you're going for masters by research, by research with masters, you need a professor to say yes. If it's MEng, masters in engineering, you don't That's need a the professor. That's the course-based masters. If you're going for masters by uh, research, right, you have to contact that supervisor. And once the person responds to you, if the person says yes, I'll supervise you, exactly. then you can go ahead and apply. You don't just go and submit an application when you've not heard from. That has happened to me before with the University of Calgary right you don't just go and submit an application while you're still in the talking stage with a professor or when the professor sure. has not specifically said yes I'll supervise you because you're shooting yourself in the foot <laughs> your application That's will just get tossed true. in the trash after he said he was going to supervise me I put in my application I think it took about a month or two when, when was this like one month oh uh, can I even remember so the application started in October. It all has to do with timeline, you know. U of A has when they want to start the application process for graduate studies. Mm -hmm. So I think it was in October or something. He concluded it was going to take me by November. I put in my application around that um, time. November 2017? Yes. Okay. And I got a response, I think in January, that my application has been approved and I have my offer letter. You had your admission letter? Yes. The offer letter. In January 2018? January 2018. But you were supposed to start when? September? Yes. 2018. 2018. Wow. So I had time for my... <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. I, I had time for visa to and visa. all that. Okay. Yeah. So... <laughs> I'm just like so shocked. I'm like, I've always been saying that admission processing takes a long time, but like that's Mine literally was so like quick. one month or two months. Yes. Wow. Mine was quite quick. Like I was surprised when I got it. Mine took surprised. like six months, almost seven yeah. months before I got my own admission. Yeah. But then I was doing something different and it was cost based. Yeah. Mine was quick. I mean, because I had a professor, right, that really wanted me and you know, my transcript was good. So. <laughs> <laughs> make sure your transcripts are good though. yeah it's like make sure your grades are top notch oh. yeah exactly like once you have a good transcript i believe you can get anything you want in this part of the world from your undergraduates right in in civil engineering yeah your final year project 
was it anything related to steel no. or structural? So I did something on soil. Soil, okay. Because, you know, back then, the professors are the ones that tell you what you want to do. So I did something on soil. So I had this discussion with my professor that I was going to get funding. But he didn't tell me how much. Okay. But he said it was fully funded. My tuition is covered. Um, and then stipend because that's not actually salary. It's not paying. The money is not enough. <laughs> the stipend was not enough, enough every month. You had to just substitute yeah. by working. working a part-time job. Exactly. That's what you did, right? Yeah, working a part-time job did. just to add to it. But the most important fa fact is that the your tuition, tuition was, was already covered. covered. How was your tuition like every semester? Right now it has increased. But okay. when I was in school, I think I paid... 36 for a semester yeah 36 so is it is this when you're doing the research or when you're taking because you took the first every semester. year you took like a set of courses so every, number semester, of courses. every, every semester, semester 3600 yeah 3000 and like how many semesters did you do in a year winter fall and then summer i was doing research in summer let's just approximate it to something like 10 12000 dollars in a year yeah. but during summer it's 2500 okay. it's kind of less so I, I pay $2,500 every summer. That's somewhere between ten and twelve or thirteen thousand dollars in a year. Canadian dollars. For me during my time, my tuition was like twenty thousand for, for the, the year? Two, for two years. That's what was in the you know that document that accompanies the admission letter. Yeah. That's what they said twenty thousand. Twenty thousand Canadian dollars for two years. Yes. You already said that your funding was already covered, so no more questions on that. With regards to this application, how was that experience like? Oh, Did man. you apply online? Did you go in person? For the visa application, I want to keep telling people. There's this link, Nairland. So the Nairland link, like visa application link, um, portfolio, what was it called? Like section. It was really very helpful. Like I got all the information I needed. I applied online. For the documentation, you know you have to show family tie. You know what will bring you back to Nigeria. Did you write an SOP? Yes, I did. I wrote an SOP. Okay. I wrote two page SOP. <laughs> Explaining why I'm going to Canada and I have to come back. <laughs> I want to apply my knowledge back home. I was open to coming back because I was a graduate assistant in our school. I was working in the university while working for the construction company I was working for. I wanted to be a professor or a lecturer back home. My SOP I explained the reason why I was going and explaining that I'm going to still come back and apply my knowledge, which I might do in the future. I feel the key, which is what I've always said, yeah. or I've said before in previous videos, is when you're writing the SOP, you have to be able to convince them and let them know that yeah. yes, you want to come back, right? Like, tell them you want to come back. You don't, you don't just say, I will go back to my country. You have to have something concrete. Mm -hmm. I remember when I did mine, I told them that I was going to work with a multinational oil and gas firm, like NMPC, and I was going to do a bunch of things that I wanted to do. This is the project that I wanted to like something concrete as opposed to just saying I'll go back to Nigeria and develop my community no yes. <laughs> that's too vague okay yeah. you have to be very very specific and say this is what I want to do going back home I want to liaise or work with this company or that company one secret well it's not really a secret but one tip I'll give is when you're writing your SOP for visa think of a problem that you in your solve. field a problem that you want to solve exactly for example I have an oil and gas background, that's what I did for my project and we know the situation with oil and gas back home in Nigeria, it, there is a problem, oil bunkering and so many other things going on, the importation, the exportation, all of those things, the refining, there's a big problem with oil and gas in Nigeria and so I focused in on one and that was how I was like blowing things out of proportion I say I'm going to work with this company, I want to work with this one, this is what I want to do to solve this problem, so think of a problem that is in that area or that line of um, specialization that you're in for the masters and say this is what I want to solve this is a problem that I want to solve for this community or in this community and work with these people and those people to solve that problem when I go back yeah right so it sounds very concrete have an actual concrete plan instead of just saying I, I will go back and develop my community you know what are you developing in your community there are so many people who have said that before yeah right it's about being unique and standing out i think mine was i said i was going to solve the problem of collapse of buildings in nigeria today yes. it's still a problem in yeah. lagos and in other places so in, in your email <laughs> yeah when you sent out 
the emails what did you attach to the emails that will make a research supervisor want to even respond first paragraph was introduction who are you your degree certificates making it concise right and then the second because before you before you contact a professor you have to know what he's working on. I read one of his um, mm -hmm. research papers and in the abstract, I'm not saying you should read all the papers, just the abstract, because the abstract summarizes everything you need to know mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the paper, right? So I just took a sentence in that paper and I referenced it in the email, trying to say I've done something similar to that. That's actually that's actually very impressive because if I was the professor and someone is coming to meet me and I'm like, oh, I read your paper on this, this and that, you know, that kind of thing, yeah. and I've done something on this and I want to work with you, like, it makes me feel like, oh my God, like you didn't just go and yeah. just read like you actually read my time. papers you took your time to give yourself that background knowledge of what i do and mm -hmm. the areas that i focused on which is another tip for you guys if you're applying for masters by research the information the contact information for the supervisor is is there on the website even if they give a brief summary and say this professor works in so 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 and so field right usually sometimes you will see the list of publications that they've had papers they've written or presentations that they've done or talks that they've given right go through them skim through them i'm not saying read the entire thing but you can yeah. pick like a few right if it aligns with what you're interested in even if you're not interested in everything but you can pick something from there this is a tip pick something from there and then be like okay i came across this paper that you published regarding this topic mm -hmm. and i'm interested right but then do you have work experience in that area of interest yeah. just like she said she's worked in that part that you put that, yes right exactly. so I think it helps it does help and I think this this other tip something that will help those of you who want to apply for PhD because PhD like <laughs> you can't do PhD course based but if you're someone who is watching me us right now and you're interested in going for a PhD I hope this video I hope you're making your notes and I hope you're learning <laughs> so yeah what advice would you give to those like our fellow international people, our fellow like intending immigrants, yeah. you know, applying for school or maybe say to your fellow engineers out there, you know, what, would, what advice would you give them before someone coming in for engineering or even if just anybody at all that wants to come in through school, general advice though. One thing I tell people, anyone who reached out to me to, you know, for advice and especially if you want to do it by yourself, you can do it by yourself like you can apply to schools you can come to this country by yourself you don't need any agents you don't need anybody to do it for yeah. you don't it's waste your money like exactly. that <laughs> don't let anybody tell you you cannot do it i did it myself like i mean if i can do it anybody can do it it's all about having patience mm -hmm. you have to have patience when you're doing it because it's frustrating it's annoying sometimes you just want to give up especially if you are coming for masters and research based masters and you need a professor to say yes to you it can be annoying sometimes when you reach out and nobody nobody answers you it's all about having patience and you keep going like yeah. you just have to have that patience patient your mobile data <laughs> and your time you can do it don't pay anybody anything a combo <laughs> like a combo it's it's easy it's just putting the work in fact doing it by yourself even helps you it prepares you for the challenge you're going to face when you arrive yeah. right because if someone does it for you you have no clue of what you're going to expect but if you do it by yourself you've already prepared yourself your mind you've already known the process you know and then when you arrive it's very easy for you to settle and transition into school anyway easy thank you so much for coming on my channel and sharing your immigration story thank with you for me. with us this yeah. is a four-year journey four years is not easy <laughs> but hey like if anybody can do it then you know yes. you guys can do it i hope that this experience this story kind of helps to give you some perspective helps to encourage you in your application or wherever you are right now with your decision or your desire to come into canada if this video was helpful give it a thumbs up <laughs> like subscribe like <laughs> share with friends let's move this channel for her channel has lots and i mean wealth of information if i wasn't here i'm gonna use her channel to know what i'm going to do she has a lot of information share with your friends people that want to leave the country okay. tell them about the channel because it has so much information that they need like subscribe sh and share thank you thank you guys turn on your post notifications so that you don't miss other videos i might 
turn this into a series i don't know i don't know who is going to be next i'll keep looking for people i will see you guys in my next video stay safe bye bye <laughs>